going on, my friends? Today, we're working on a key bucket hot rod. You know what? Before we get started, I want to say I'm Eddie Barrett with Atomic Auto Works. We're a restoration and customization shop located in New England. And if you are a returning friend, subscriber, thank you for coming back. If you're new to our channel, welcome. We hope you like our videos. Let's get going. This is a replica. It's a fiberglass body. It's built by a company in Connecticut. And we have done thousands of these interiors over the years. It's kind of one of those things where I remember the first time I did a deep bucket, I was like, this is weird. We're bonding wood into a fiberglass body. We're hammering nails into it back then. All this weird stuff that you're not used to when you work on cars. Uh, we did do obviously woodworking on some Model A's and stuff like that, but for the most part, Unless it's a restoration, you would take all the wood out and you would never put wood in a car. These ones, that's kind of how they've been done for years. We are developing a new insert that bonds to the bodies that will eliminate all of this. Um, so someday in the future, that will be ready to rock and roll, hopefully. But for now, we're doing it like this. We went through, we bonded it in, and I'm going to tell you some dirty little secrets that nobody wants to talk about. So when you put this wood in, it's actually, you use body filler to bond the wood in. The secret is you want to use a really high quality body filler. We do sand the back of the wood. We do clamp it on the body. You want to make sure when you clamp it in there, you actually have something on the outside, like another piece of wood. So you're not clamping to the body because what will happen is when you clamp it, you're going to suck the body in and then it's going to dry there. And let me tell you, if you think this is not secure, you can try to get this wood out. You will literally rip the body, the, the fiber less apart, trying to get the wood out. So that body filler bonds really well. And most of these bodies are made with a polyester resin and the body fillers that you use are always usually a polyester base. So they actually, and they use the same hardeners, it's just the body filler has some secret little powders in it to make it thicker so it's more workable. But anyway, when you clamp it together, it is permanent and it bonds on there. Now for the old school style interior kits that we're doing on this one, where you have the big nice roll and you have to pull that over, you're actually pulling it over and I'm putting a tack strip into the top here. The reason that I'm doing that is because, well, the reason I'm doing it now before we finish the bodywork is, um, we used to use nails. Back in the day, we always used nails. And even with the screws, you gotta be careful because sometimes when they go in, if they hit a knot, they could bend and break or whatever. The nails, you know, they used to have to shoot out the side of the car. So you really wanna do that before you body work it whenever possible. Now that we're using the screws, it's a lot easier, a little more consistent. Needless to say, we are drilling and there's something could happen. So we wanna make sure that we do the body work afterwards. I'm putting the tack strip on. This is where we pull the roll over and we're gonna staple to it. After we staple our material to it, we put a nice tight them all the way around there to cover our staple edges and you'll have a nice piece. If you wanted to do the body work and put the complete interior in first, because a lot of guys are iffy and they might staple weird or they might slip and scratch the paint, you could put the interior in, mask it off really, really well, paint the car, and then come back and actually put your height in. It'll be right at the edge and hide anything, any cape lines or anything you have. So that's a good way if you're a beginner putting an interior in to avoid that. Now, if you're a sloppy body guy and you don't mask that material off really well, you're gonna get overspray in your interior and that's a whole nother mess. As long as you really pay attention and do a really nice job that and masking it off, you won't have any problem painting the car with the interior kit in it. We're gonna do all the body work, get that done. I'll put the interior kit in last. I've done, like I said, thousands of these things so I know we're not gonna have an issue. Plus, since I'm painting it, if we do have an issue, I'm the guy that has to fix it. With that said, I have to bond a little bit more wood in and we're gonna, you know, this gives you an area, the wood gives you an area to screw your interior panels into. Um, it does stiffen up the body a lot. And then, if I haven't already said this, when you, when we bond this on, what's gonna happen is we're bonding this wood to it. So that body filler is gonna go in there and it's gonna dry and it's gonna shrink. And even when you're careful and you put a piece of wood on the outside to clamp it to, it's possible that you could get some warps or waves. So you wanna have your whole interior wood kit, the structure bonded in and done. And then you're gonna go to the outside of the car and do the body work. If you try to do it the opposite way and you do your body work, then you bond this in, there's a 100% chance that there's gonna be waves. Might not be a lot of waves, but it probably will be, but you'll definitely have waves that shouldn't be in there and wouldn't have been in there. So now what we're gonna do, as soon as I finish this off, we're gonna block sand this out. We're gonna get it in primer. I am gonna to have to go through and fix a little bit of chips and nets and dinks that were in here. One trick that I wanna show you, so what I do on these bodies is I'll take a just regular three quarter inch tape and I'll run it down the edge and pull it nice and tight and straight. And then we could put our 
tack strip right up against there and that'll give us a straight line. So I actually went and you can see is what I did is I tried to drill on this side and countersink the screws so that they're on this side so there's no bumps. I deliberately put this one here so you could see what happens if you put them on the outside, you see that little bump? So the inside doesn't matter. The outside is what does matter. When you go to put your outer upholstery in here to staple to it, this is the edge that matters. So when it comes down, that little bump's gonna show. So we're gonna, I'm gonna take that back out and move it back, but I wanted to show you what it looks like, what you don't want. That's enough talk about tack strips. We will resume the tack strip conversation when we do the upholstery. For now, I gotta finish up this wood kit and start the body work. I'm gonna cut this video a little short just because we have to make room in the other shop for some projects that are coming in. So I have a lot of stuff to move and that'll give this tea bucket here some time to dry, let the body fillers really like firm up so the wood's nice and secure. And again, thank you for watching our videos. Please remember to like, share, subscribe, follow, all that happy stuff. And if you're interested in some of our other work we do, you could check out Atomic Truck Works on YouTube for all of our truck content. You could check out Atomic Cycle Works on YouTube for all of our motorcycle work and Atomic Marine Works for all of our boat enthusiasts. Thank you very much. See you next time.